Henshaw's Daily Living. Welcome to Henshaw's Tips, Tricks and Tech and a different video. We're calling it the Masterclass in Cookery. This video is a little bit longer than our normal stuff, but listen, it's packed full of really good information, techniques, skills. Just keep tuned because you're going to learn something. I spent a day in the kitchen with the fantastic Laura Fascia, who's a gold winning Paralympian in cycling and she's visually impaired. In fact, she's totally blind from birth, but she's skilled in the kitchen. So she's going to show you how to prepare food healthily, safely. She'll have some tips, some tech in there. And uh, it was just a really good day. So this is a series of videos that we've got. We've got videos on safe cutting, using an afro comb of all things, talking microwaves, talking jugs, safe kettles, just the whole array of elements to help you cook safely and prepare food in the kitchen. You can help us in a really small way by clicking on subscribe, clicking on like, or making a comment on these videos, which will enable us to make even more videos and get to even more people that need our support. So, cue the video. So we're here in the kitchen with all the ingredients behind us. So what we're cooking, are? So today I'm gonna to make a chicken and mango stir fry. It's one of my favorite meals to make because stir fries are really simple. Um, you only need one pan, which helps to keep it really basic. Um, you're not having to worry about many pans and juggling things here, there and everywhere. And yeah, it, um, there's lots of, lots of nutrition in there from the mango. I know people don't really like to put fruit in, in their savoury meals. So hopefully what we're going to get out of this is your tips and tricks. So yeah. all, the little, uh, all the sly things that you're going to do that are going to make this journey of ours a little bit more simple. The first thing I, I generally do is I try and prepare as much as possible for before I start cooking so that I'm not running all around the kitchen and there's hot pans here, there and everywhere. You know, keep it, keep it as simple as possible. Do as much preparation first get everything out the way and then start the cooking. Fantastic. Well, let's get to work. Yeah. So first I'm going to slice the onion. And again, to keep everything you, you don't want to eat that's not edible out the way for off the chopping board so that it doesn't get mixed up in the food that you want. And I also, I love these. These are Joseph Joseph chopping boards um, and they fold so when you're putting things in a pan, yeah. you you don't you can scoop it and you're not it's kind of fumbling yeah, into it. Yeah, so some things don't fly off and yeah. you lose stuff. And with this, I'm just feeling where each slice I want, um, and just doing it slowly and steadily. If you yeah. rush, you that's when you're going to hurt yourself. So just. Take your time. Yeah. I'm using my finger to kind of feel how thick I want it. But then I know everyone says don't put things in the pan until it's hot, but it's just easier. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's prepared. So that's in the pan. And the next step I want to do is to prepare the garlic, chili, and ginger, which give it the stir fry its spice. Okay. Um, so I have a little. It's um, again a Joseph Joseph silicon garlic peeler and you yeah, rub it. So I rub the garlic between in the silicon between my hands and that helps to crack the garlic skin so yeah. then it just comes away really easily. Nice. Don't need to peel the ginger. Yeah. Um, if you're grating it yourself you, you probably do. Um, for what I'm doing. Hey hold your ginger now. It's gonna be nice. Hope you like ginger. Put the garlic and ginger in this little bowl. And that, that's all prepared to go in the garlic and ginger. Right. Um, so I'll just leave that to one side. Now it's the chilies. So you're just going to slice them? Yeah. I'm going to still leave the seeds in. Okay, but, yep. Yeah. One thing I've, I've learned to accept is that it will take me a little bit longer than someone who can see, but I'm still able to do it and I still enjoy it. Um, so again, I'll put the chilli in. Out the way. Um, so this is miles better than having a microwave now. 
No, you no. might you might change your mind by the end, yeah. but hopefully not. No pinging in this house. Next, next I'll go to the carrot. First of all, I'll peel it, um, and then you'll see the, my. It's called the chip and dice. Um, I've got it from Lakeland. Lakeland's a really good shop for getting tools that are really easy for you to use, um, and they help you. And, you know, make your cooking quicker and, and more simple. So I'll cut it into um, small chunks, similar length, first of all. Here at the bottom here, you've got a knife guard. So if you wanted to make these into dice rather than chips, which yeah. or, or matchsticks, you slide the knife in and chop, and it just it makes. It's a lot safer. You're not you're not near the blade, okay. and you can get to size. So I I want matchsticks. Yeah. So you, you line it up, and then you just there we go. So that's all the carrot done. So now that I'm done with this, so I'll move that out of the way. I'm going to have to uh, test drive these carrots, by the way. So that just. Once you're done with something, again, just clear it out of the way. Yeah. Um, so now we're on to the pepper. So I'm cutting the peppers into nice strips. Try, trying to keep it similar, you know, similar thickness. Now, final vegetable. So we've got lots of veg, and that's that's the other thing I always try to do with my cooking. Yeah. Is <coughs> The rubbish out of the way again, make sure you don't just keep it neater and tidier. Yeah. Um, as many vegetables, I always try at least three for, okay. for every meal I'm cooking. Yeah. Um, just to keep it keep it healthy, um, a variety, colourful. I know I know again I can't see the colour, but we always try and make things as colourful as possible because then most of the nutrition is now we're finding is in the colour of the veg, not just the yeah, amount. Yeah. We've got a mango which is always trickier. Yeah, it's it's a fruit that I love, but if I didn't have this, which is another handy tool from, from Lakeland, um, that you basically slot over the mango okay. and slice down and it cuts the stone out and you're left with the, just the flesh and the skin. Right. And you're just left with the, the bit in the middle. In the middle. And then you find where that stone is and just trim it away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Every bit counts. Uh, indeed, especially with mango. I love the mango. So it does, it makes it so much easier. Um, I'd be the same. If you can't get one, the other or another way of making sure you get more mango, um, frozen chunks. Yeah. Really easy to use. It's already prepared, which means it takes a lot less time. Um, so now I'm just slicing, feeling where the skin is, and slicing the skin off. My biggest worry is making sure I serve cooked meat. You know, and don't don't poison us or anything else. Um, so if you cook, cook meat up small, um, it takes a lot less time to cook and you can pretty much be guaranteed that it will be cooked all the way through. So I like to use a longer handle wooden spoon, especially with this, this pan. Um, again, it just helps keep you away from the heat. Yeah, um, that's it. And use bigger pans because there's a lot more space, so when you're stirring, you're not going to send things accidentally flying. Um, and again, the, this this is a wok because I'm doing a, a stir fry, but I also have a frying pan that's got quite deep sides, um, which just again helps with making sure you don't flick things out of the pan. I've got the chilli and the onion already in the pan, just because again, it's already prepped, um, and I don't want to add as much too much when it's hot because it's safer. I'm going to add in the chilli and the garlic that I've already grated up. Well, that can all go in. Put that out the way in Again, I like to just try and keep as lit. Once I've used something, move it out of the way so 
as less clutter as possible. You can hear it starting to sizzle now as it's heating up. Um, now, I have, I, I have, I've developed because I always, I just use my hands because they're my, they're basically my eyes, and I've grown up using my hands. So I'm always putting my hands in the pan, and you do develop, you do get used to, and you learn ways that work for you and what I do might not work for someone who can see or who has some sight yeah. and it's it's about problem solving and about learning your own way of doing things it might not look pretty and it might not be the way that people recommend but if it works for you and it allows you to do what you want to do then that that's that's the most important thing um, so in goes all the vegetables um, everything just goes straight in, give it all a stir, um, and then the mango goes in. Mango. So again, it's, this one's another one that's just cold. Looking, uh, looking nice, very colourful. Generally, I found as well. I sometimes will probably over, slightly overcook things, but it's better to be confident that your chicken is fully cooked than than to share, to serve raw meat. Now we flavour. We want some soy sauce. Um, I I like soy sauce. You can measure it. Like um, I've got measuring spoons, but. These days, because I, I, I'm fairly confident in what I do, I just go in and I, I know how much just from feel. The sign of a true chef. That's what they tell me. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to add the noodles. And what I do is I just break them up a little bit as I put them in the pan. I give that a stir. Good job, it's a big pan. So we're all plated up and we're ready to eat, so we're not going to uh, keep you much longer. So just any any quick kind of summary, Laura? Yeah, enjoy it. Take your time over it. Don't rush it. Um, and don't be afraid to, to, to adapt things to suit you and do things slightly differently to what people say you should do it. Because it, after all, it's, it's your, um, your life. You're the one living it. Um, and what works for you might not work for everyone, but it allows you to look after yourself, look after your family. If you're cooking for friends, family, you know, loved ones, if that, that sense of empowerment of being able to care for someone who is doing also a lot for you, they, they're caring for you, they're supporting you through your sight loss, but you're able to give back, you're able to provide them with a healthy meal and, you know, support them too. Oh, fantastic. So um, so we're going to finish now. Uh, so thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of it. And please comment, you know, let us know how you get, how you cook, if you took any reference to this video. And please check out the links to Laura's blog and all the other stuff that's within this Knowledge Village. So thanks for watching. So grub up, let's eat. Mango. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Our videos are helping people across the world. If you found them useful, please donate on our website so we can keep making more videos like this in the future. Henshaws, supporting people with sight loss and a range of other disabilities to go beyond expectations.